A very good evening. My name is Vishal Yadav. I am from Female Cricket, this platform that promotes women's cricket. And today with me, I have Haley Matthews, uh, one of the exciting talent from the West Indies, the Caribbean cricket. Haley, uh, before we jump, uh, you know, to to the World Cup and what's what's ahead for us in the 2022, I want you, you know, to tell us about you know that sports. It it basically runs in your blood. You were champion in track and field events, also a gold medal. Gold medalist in javelin games. What made you take up cricket professionally, and uh, you know, over other sports particularly? Um, I think from a young age, I pretty much fell in love with cricket. Um, both my brother and my father played, uh, so I think when it came up to choosing cricket over any other sports I was into, it wasn't really too much of a challenge for me, to be honest. Um, like I said, I had this huge love for the game. I think from the time I was about eight, I knew that I wanted to be a professional cricketer. And yeah, I don't think anything could have changed my mind from that, really. That That's great to know. That's great to know, Eli. Uh, we, we had a, a, the challenges going on, which ultimately got cancelled due to, you know, the uh, outburst of uh, Omicron new virus. How was it heading back home in time for Christmas and New Year's with your family? Uh, yeah, well, it was pretty challenging. I think um, getting out of Zimbabwe in the first place, obviously, with all the travel restrictions was quite a rush. I think it was a case like one day they just told us we had to pack our bags and kind of get on the plane and get out as soon as possible. Um, obviously, then we had to spend, I think, about 11 days in Oman, um, 10 of them, which were quarantined. Uh, we had some problems actually getting out to the airport. I think we were at the airport hotel for about three days because of visa issues and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was quite challenging, but I think in the end, we were all just pretty happy to get back home. Like you said, obviously, um, we got to spend Christmas at home with our families, which is always, always really nice. Um, getting to go home for New Year's, uh, just enjoying those couple holidays. Obviously, we're quite busy on the road um, throughout most of the year. So it's been really good to spend that time with our family before having to, I guess, recoup and get going again for a pretty big year. Well, festivals with family, it, it can't get any better than that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about your performances, uh, particularly last year. You had a great 21. You won Player of the Month for the November month and also got nominated twice for this honour. How do you assess your, your 2021 and are you happy with your performances? Yeah, I think uh, if I look back at my year, I probably had a couple of highs. Um, Probably a couple of lows as well. I probably didn't have the best series or the series that I wanted with the bat against South Africa where as well as we played against Pakistan, I had a much better time. Um, I think it was definitely a year of adapting for me, obviously. I changed from opening to batting at number five, which was quite different for me. Um, but I obviously think I had a bit of success in that area. And then I think with the ball as well, um, I probably surprised a lot of people, I, I guess myself even, uh, with some of the performances I put down. So, I mean, I think in all, I wrap it up and say I'm pretty content with how the year goes. Well, sorry, with how the year went. Um, but at the same time, I know I've got a lot more in the tank to bring for 2022 as well. I think that that's all that matters, right? As far as you are content, as far as you are satisfied with the performances, that's all uh, counts. But uh, I, I must ask you, Haley, do you set goals for yourself? Did you have any goals back in 21? Do you have any goals now? going going ahead in 2022 yeah for sure um plenty i think i think um i mean it's always going to well to put down numbers um at the beginning of the year and have those goals and i guess gauges of where you want to hit um i think in 2021 for me uh, i probably got just around or pretty close with my batting um i was able to exceed what i wanted with my bowling which was pretty good um like i said and yeah obviously coming up into 2022 now i've got uh, a lot of cricket obviously we've got this series coming up against South Africa into the World Cup um, I've got Commonwealth Games for Barbados as well which is going to be pretty exciting to be a part of and then obviously probably going to have some series after that as well so uh, yeah I definitely got some numbers down on things that I'm looking to do um, but yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a long road ahead in 2022 and yeah I'm just hoping I can have a really good year with it Great we, we hope and pray that you you know, achieve a lot of those goals of yours. Uh, but Haley, you, you're only 23 and have been around with the West Indies side for over eight years now. What has been, you know, the biggest highs and lows of your career so far when, when you look back now? 
uh, it has been a long couple of years, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't think there's probably one particular instance. Um, I would say though, some highlights are definitely, obviously that 2016 World Cup was massive for us, um, winning our first T20 title. That was my first World Cup as well, being a part of that, um, being a part of that final. Uh, I guess along with watching the men the very same night win the tournament, that was obviously something dreams are made of. Um, definitely nothing that a lot of people get to see uh, ev happen every single day, and we were quite lucky to be a part of that. Um, that's definitely a hype for me. I think scoring my first ODI 100 at home. Um, actually, my dad played for our Pickwick Cricket Club and Kensington Oval was their home ground while I was growing up. So I literally spent every Saturday growing up at Kensington Oval. So to be able to go back there and be able to make my first ODA century obviously was pretty huge for me as well. Um, I guess when it comes to lows, I mean, I always believe in a long career span, you're going to have a lot of them, uh, probably <laughs> a couple more than the highs, if I'm being quite honest. Uh, I would say 2020 was probably quite a challenging year. I think it was probably challenging for a lot of us. Um, obviously, COVID came about that year and stuff like that. Um, our T20 World Cup was in the greatest that year and my performances personally as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just really happy that I was able to bounce back well from that in 2021, to be honest. Great, great, great. You, you have been you know, part of WNCL, uh, the Women's National Cricket League, the 100 now, uh, Women's T20 Challenge as well. Uh, what are some key takeaways from each of these tournaments for you? Yeah, I think it's just the experience, really. Um, also, the different cultures, uh, playing with different people, uh, learning from some of the most experienced players in the game, even when they're not on your team. Um, I think when you travel to those parts of the world, say in England, Australia, um, you see the level of their domestic structures. It's really <laughs> big and uh, really good. So, I mean, just being a part of those leagues, adds immensely to, I guess, your experience and adapting to different situations. Um, you bat different parts of the order than you would. You get out of your comfort zone playing for different teams. And yeah, I really think all those help with my experience throughout the years and I guess the growth of my game on a whole. All right. Coming to 2022, the mega year. There's so much planned. There's so much happening this year. And, uh, you know, West Indies have won the last four matches consecutively before the Sri Lanka match, I think, got cancelled. Uh, what do you think the team has done right in these games to, you know, pick the wins? Yeah, look, I, I honestly think we found a really good balance at this point um, with our batting lineup. Obviously, Deandre is a very dangerous player at the top of the order, and she's been doing that really, really well uh, for the last couple of games. And I guess having that structure with myself, um, Stefani Taylor, Shemaine Campbell, who's just come back as well. Um, in the middle of that order to kind of secure things really tightly has been really, really good for the team. And it's shown to be working out pretty well. Um, and then in our bowling department, I think uh, we've had quite a variety in our spin options now. We've seen a lot of our younger players coming through as spinners, uh, Kiana Joseph, Shanita Grimman, and they've been performing really well for us. And yeah, our opening bowlers have been doing a fantastic job as well, which has been really, really good to see. Um, so I think it kind of just all, go, all goes down to our balance in the team that we have right now. Uh, we have a solid squad that we've been working with for a little while and it's really good to see. And the timing couldn't get any better. We have a World yeah. Cup coming, uh, and which is after five long years. How excited, on a personal level, how excited are you for this World Cup? Yeah, very. Um, I think it's going to be a huge World Cup, if not the biggest one that we've had ever. Um, obviously going somewhere like New Zealand to play. Um, for us, literally on the opposite side of the world. Um, and then women's cricket has grown so much over the last couple of years. Um, just the following, the coverage, and then the level of the game on a whole. So I definitely think that this World Cup is going to be the biggest one yet. And yeah, definitely something that we're going to love being a part of and hopefully can put on some really good performances in it as well. We can't wait to see you all playing, playing the World Cup. My final question before I let you go, Eli. You definitely are an experienced campaigner, like I said, you know, eight years of, of career cricket so far. Uh, you have seen a lot of highs and lows in the team. Where do you see yourself and the West Indies team in the next five years? Uh, I mean, that is a tough question, to be honest. Um, like I said, we've had, we've had a lot of youth coming through um, of late. Um, 
we've been having a lot of camps, a lot of 25, 26 player camps, and we've had a lot of younger girls coming into the setup. Um, I think obviously with the bunch that we have right now, quite a few of them are around maybe 30, 32. Um, and yeah, they, I, I'm not sure how soon they're gonna filter out to the system, but I think it's gonna be really exciting to see some of the talent that we have coming through. Um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully we can continue to build on the players that we have right now. Um, and yeah, I think we can definitely be a dominant team in a couple of years once we continue to have the right structure to come through and continue to work hard. I wish all your dreams come true, Eli. On that note, uh, thank you so much for joining me on this chat. And I wish you and the entire West Indies team all the best for the upcoming tour as well as the mega Women's Cricket World Cup. Thank you. Appreciate it.